and there's a there's a share sound button someplace. Does anybody, I don't see it. Does anybody know where it is? I don't see it in this format. Maybe once I share the screen, it'll show up. So uh, let me see. Yeah, there it is. Okay. We got it. So uh, I'm going to put up the, uh, first thing I want to do is put up the sort of homework assignment thing. And uh, if I can find it here easily. Uh, I've got too many things going on. Let me see here. There we go. So uh, some questions for us all to have a little conversation about. Uh, it's open mic, I guess. How, how would you explain shared interest to a child? I, I actually believe if you can't explain something to a child, you don't understand it. I immediately thought it's when something you want and something I want intersect or this they're yeah. the same thing. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Do, do you think good relationships are likely absent addressing shared interests? What do you think? I think it's definitely a lot more difficult. I think if you have shared values and principles, you can get around it sometimes. But if you, if you don't have okay, that, that either, it's the, those, tough. those would be interests. Okay, okay, you define those as interests. Yeah, I, I, that would be tough. I think to have a good relationship if you don't I see have that. This is a casting a big net. So gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about uh, just to get uh, to the question one uh, of sharing a story. And I usually use like a, a mouse or two mouses, a mice then, um, you know, tell a story and actually, you know, showing to the kid, you know, there's the mouse, there's a, do you see it, do you see it, you know, and they, when we both will look at this mouse looking for some cheese or whatever, and then we will assist the mouse. It's like a story, you know, using imagination with a child. And getting both focused on something okay. else than just looking at each other. Good. Do, do you think it's really important to inventory these before you enter a long-term relationship? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> this was this was the mistake in my first marriage. I never did this. Same. And, and, and we actually, I'll talk about this a little bit. We actually didn't have any. Um, uh, none. Uh, yeah, I missed it in all three marriages. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I tend to make this a focus area for the future one. I, I absolutely think so. <laughs> is, is this really simple? What's the inquiry? You guys know? What, what do they want that I can want for them also? It's that simple. Does addressing shared interests reduce conflict? What do you think? Yes. Between groups? Absolutely. Yes. So this is actually, Charlie, the first step I always use in any negotiation, especially uh, business nice. and licensing, is what what's where where can we get to where we have shared interests? And it always goes smoother once you identify nice. those in nice. my experience. That's really yeah. powerful stuff. Yeah. The work, uh, Jet Propulsion Lab, I did a lot of workshops there. And uh, the, the way they set up project teams is they, being a sort of a contractor themselves, uh, they, they sort of put an integrated team together with the contractor. It's what they call a badgeless group, which really isn't, but that's what they like to do it. And over the time, conflicts erupt. And the reason is they have unshared interests. Uh, and so I did a ton of work with this and I divide them in the room into two groups. By the way, I, I did this with um, a, a Chinese company, a uh, Volkswagen company in uh, in China. One of my things in last, and we're still traveling in 2019. And it was so powerful, almost brought tears to their eyes. And and so maybe I'll describe that one. That, that's, that's really pretty interesting. So uh, the... Uh, the, the, the Chinese mentality is uh, practicality is all that matters. Uh, they, they, they violate traffic rules at will if it gets them there faster. They, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't follow rules at all if they get in the way of getting the job done faster. 
That's one of their great strengths. And of course, uh, many of our greatest weaknesses are overdone strengths. So they have crappy construction. They don't follow building codes and all that. So you can imagine how this works in an integrated team with Germans, okay? So, so they're, at, they're at each other's throats. So what I did was I separated them, the, the had about 40 people into two groups of 20. And I didn't call them the Germans and the Chinese. I called them the English speaking group and the Mandarin speaking group. So, because there are a number of Chinese who do understand English. And I wanted, I didn't want to make this attention completely about nationality. So I facilitated the group in uh, English, the, the, the German, and it was probably about 70% Germans, 30% Chinese. And my, uh, the, the lady that hired me who does 4D work, she did the same thing with the group in Mandarin. And my translator would, as we went through it, so I would say, what, what, does, what does the Mandarin speaking, speaking group want that we can want for them also? And they quickly found out that in the middle of all the conflict, they, want, they both wanted uh, uh, a, a really high quality, inexpensive car for the market. They both wanted to increase market share and so forth and so on. So I, I uh, did it in English and wrote these on a flip chart. And uh, my translator immediately wrote them in, uh, in Chinese characters. Um, a second translator went over and worked with, with the other group and wrote them in English. So every group had one panel in English and one group panel in, in, in Chinese characters. And I, I think it's really important when you do this, you go to the second group and say, is this something you really want to confirm it's true? Because a lot of projection. And make some little modifications. Then we put the two flip charts up on the up in front of the group and went through them. And and there was like the 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 head of the Chinese the, the Chinese team, which I had organized as the Mandarin team, and the head of the German teams, they almost came to tears and said, this is worth the whole price of the workshop, this exercise alone, because I think we can work together now. And I think this typically works about 18 months. And the way I like to do it when I'm working with the JPL groups is we, we have the two lists of things, the wants, then we turn those into requests and see if the other person will agree to do it. For example, a very typical thing in a NASA team is uh, the the the, uh, the the contractor will say, or the the government will say, all the contractor wants to do is maximize their profit. They don't care about anything else. And the contractor might say, no, that's not true. That's not something we want. We want we want the pro the fair profit that we propose. We don't want more than that. And we and and then they'll turn to the government and say, you want to cut our profit backs, so you got more reserves. And the government will say, no, we want to honor our contract. So dialogue's very constructive. So I like to have them turn those into requests that, they, that they're going to make and then write those as an operating agreement. And at least the leaders, if not everybody, signs the operating agreement. And again, this, this works about 18 months. So this is powerful stuff. Uh, I thought it'd be useful to have this little introduction. Anybody want to say anything more about this before we move into the slides? Comments, questions, thoughts? Okay. I've never seen anybody do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I've been in so many large meetings where we have multiple stakeholders that need to get something done. So it's going to be an experiment and I'll probably actually, actually, look I don't know it anybody up. else that does this either. But, <laughs> but uh if I can solve the problems with the Chinese and the Germans with this, uh that's about as, as deep as it gets in terms of uh the, the difficulty. This works really well. So here we go into the slide set. I thought this was funny. I'm a Democrat or Republican, the shared interest, I need a drink. <laughs> So I, people ask me, how did I get onto this? I, I worked for a lawyer for a time, a guy named Sam Keller, if you've ever heard the name, Matt, who was uh, a, a jerk, you know, a smart jerk. And I could never get what I wanted from him. And the reason I realized later was he sort of saw himself as a judge, making everybody equally unhappy from his night, night law school degree. And uh, I thought that my lack of negotiation ability was the problem. So when I went to Harvard, I became aware there was the Harvard Negotiation Project. 
and this is their book, Getting to Yes. So I went and spent a bunch of time with them. And uh, the, 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 the thing that when I came back, I tried addressing shared interest with him, with this guy. And it worked everywhere else, but it didn't work for him because the, the difficulty is that I couldn't move him off his positions onto interest. That's that's the dilemma here, moving off of positions into interest. And so the checklist, does it address a dimension? Yep, the cultivating dimension. This is interesting. Is it a natural human need? No, we're naturally combative, especially groups. The Bedouin proverb, me against my brother, me and my brother against my cousins me, my brother, and my cousins against a stranger. This is one of the few things in here you've got to actually consciously work at. Why is this so powerful? Because we like people who are like us, who share our storylines. Let's go back to this idea of homophily. We like people that share our storylines, shared interests, or another form of storylines. Can you see it? Yep. Can you measure it? Yep. We have a standard. Can you learn it? Yep. We have a good experiential exercise coming up. Is it personally rewarding? Yes. Good business results? Yes. Many, many flight projects and the online tool, if I can ever get that up and running someplace, makes it efficient to repeat it. So addressing shared interest, this feedback loop creates the context of collaboration, meeting both your needs and others. So this was interesting. I got early on that this was meeting their needs but it occurred to me shortly after, it's meeting my needs as well. This is powerful stuff. Uh, it's sort of contrast to Donald Trump, our most basic common link is we all inhabit this planet, breathe the same air, cherish our children's future and are mortal, addressing shared interests. So I'm gonna show you a little film clip from one of the authors of the, the book and a guy in the project. And I'm gonna give you an example from Junko in my life. I'm going to show you an example from Hubble that I don't use often because I got kind of tired of it, but we've got time here for it. I'll show you. And also Japan. Then I'll describe the exercise, and I'm going to ask you guys to pair up with somebody. And at the end of our time, I'll ask you who you're going to pair with. And if not, I'll make some assignments and one-on-one -on -one do the exercise sometime next week by Zoom or telephone or whatever. So... Interesting thing about this, I realized that it really helps if you know what your interests are. Uh, at first, I didn't pay much attention to this, but if you know your interests, needs, wants, values, uh, then uh, that makes it much easier to find the shared interest. Then look at the interest of the others. And for NASA, it was often sponsors and colleagues, really important in, in personal relationships, spouses, and things like that. And the gold is almost always there if you look for it. I'll show you the rare case when it wasn't. But here's the question. What do they want that I can want from them also? It's that simple. This is one of my favorite expressions. If, if I could put a sign on every supervisor's desk in the world, it would be this sign. People do things for their reasons, not ours. Isn't that true? Here's what's fun. When you address shared interests, you make the reasons the same. Well, the subject of difficult negotiation reminds me of one of my favorite stories from the Middle East of a man who left to his three sons 17 camels. And to the first son, he left half the camels. To the second son, he left a third of the camels. And to the youngest son, he left a ninth of the camels. Well, three sons got into a negotiation. 17 doesn't divide by two. It doesn't divide by three. It doesn't divide by nine. Brotherly temper started to get strained. Finally, in desperation, they went and they consulted a wise old woman. The wise old woman thought about their problem for a long time. And finally, she came back and said, well, I don't know if I can help you. But at least if you want, you can have my camel. So then they had 18 camels. The first son took his half, half of 18 is nine. The second son took his third, a third of 18 is six. The youngest son took his ninth, a ninth of 18 is two. You get 17, they had one camel left over. They gave it back to the wise old woman. <laughs> <laughs> so think about politics. Uh, it's all about people stuck in positions. The positions on the 
Republican side, cut taxes. You see this right now, cut entitlements, reduce the debt. Democrats, tax the wealthy, protect entitlements, fund the government. All this conflict is because they, they can't address their shared interests, which are really simple. They all want these things. So people used to say to me, why don't you go work with the Congress? Well, the reason is they don't want to do this. You, you got to have somebody who wants to resolve the conflict, not enjoy it and use it for a benefit. And that's actually been one of the themes before we jump into the next section, sure. um, Charlie, yeah. that, that I've kind of been struggling with, um, you know, and it's, uh, and you use the unfortunate term, the elephant in the room. Um, what do you do and, and, and how do you know that you've got someone that's not willing to do the work, what, what have you, and, or, you know, it's, it's kind of the, who's, who's willing to play win-win and who's not. So if, if they, if they're looking to play win-lose, that's the only result is no game, right? That's the, the that's seven right. habits. That's right. Yep. Um, how, how do you, what, what do you do? How, like, uh, the, and so I don't know. I don't really have a well-formed question, let's, let's, but let's go, let's go back. Let's go back to our one of our agreements. What's the workshop about? Working on us. You changing you. Just do the best you can. And that's it. Do not waste your time trying to change other people. So yep. you know, in, in the case of this guy, I couldn't work with. I just tolerated him and finally got away from him. Uh, he ended up. Uh, as you might expect, uh, early death from uh, uh, health ailments that were brought on by his whole mindset about things. Uh, he sort of became found out and demoted and de quite independent of me. Uh, I, I think time takes care of these people. I used to hear it a lot, like about Dan Golden. I'm sure you may have encountered him, Matt. Uh, by the way, he just sent out a, a LinkedIn thing announcing the Hubble launch. He wasn't even there for it. <laughs> he had nothing to do with the project, frankly, <laughs> while I was there. So anyway, uh, sooner or later, he just, people used to say to me, look at him, he's in mistress, just wait. He got his comeuppance. Um, so I, I think do what you can yourself, focus on you, and and that's that's it. This so time, So the... The key a piece, task, the peace of mind in that for me. Yeah. So sorry. The, the, the key task then is understanding which game you're in. Yeah. And if it's, and if it's a win lose. I, I think you, 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 always, you always try and, and, and use the shared interest work. Um, by the way, I was giving a, I, I got a big award from China aerospace and they had me do this kind of a keynote address on, and i was going to do the eight behaviors in one hour. And I thought, how am I going to explain shared interest in a quick way? This It's a kind of a, in a way, it's, it's an enormously simple idea, but it's also an enormously deep idea. And that morning I got up and the headline in the, news, the, the, the newspaper, which was also the same newspaper translated into Chinese, was U.S. officials arrived to discuss shared interest with China. And so I just picked up the newspaper and said, here it is, go read about it. But uh, I think every, every, everything you ever do, it's, it's better to go into this path and push it as long as you can. And, and, and like the Congress, I'm not even going to imagine dealing with them. You know, the, the, the problem here is that they get financial benefit from donors, which is what they care about most from all this conflict. That's what it's about. And so as long as that's their motivation, uh, that, that's a higher interest for them. The job the politicians care most about is their own. And as long as getting donations from crazy people is going to help them hold their position, that's going to be, that's where they're going to be. And so you, you're going to, you're going to run into difficult people in, in business. What? One of the, the best things about having your own company is you don't have to work with these people. You just tell them no and turn down the work. But otherwise, you got to tolerate it and change yourself. Charlie, yeah. I, I think there's another one of your principles that addresses yeah. Nat's question, and that's uh, keeping your agreements. I've noticed that people that are in a 
win lose mindset or always looking out for themselves will break agreements right and yep. left. And it's yep. a, it's a huge flag. As soon as you see it happening, you know what you're doing. Absolutely. With. Absolutely. So, 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 but you're, you're making a really important point. The, the eight agreements are actually looking at one single thing through eight lenses. They're all the, the social context and character is at the core of all this. So they all interrelate and, by the way, anyone that focuses on any of the improving any of the, of the eight behaviors ends up enhancing them all. Because if you live in gratitude and appreciation, it's much easier to address shared interests. It's much easier to keep your agreements. They're all interlinked. So thank you. Good. Everybody okay? Okay. So I, I got this, so I, I did this very carefully early on with Junko, and we share interest in the food we eat, travel. We've, we've Travel's always been big for us uh, as a shared interest, and now we're doing it in the car. History, art, appreciating and caring for each other, religious and political views, classical music, all these things we have in common. Uh, and it's all bound together with 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 the, the L word. There, she has interests that I don't share. She's an orthodontist. I don't care about other people's teeth. She's uh, does crafts work a lot, sews. I don't care about that. And she doesn't care about physics or my workshops. So that's okay. The the main thing is you want to have interests that you share and uh, attend to those. So a guy named Jim Odom was one of the best project managers I ever knew. And uh, after I'd left NASA, I happened to be in Huntsville and I walk into the Marriott Hotel and he's sitting there. And I said, what are you doing here? He said, I came to look for you. I hadn't seen him for several years. And I said, how'd you know I'd be here? He said, well, I saw in the center director's calendar that you're going to be meeting with the center director. And I know you're going to stay in the best hotel in town, which is the Marriott. He had a full-time job at the time, so he said, I just sat here waiting for you to come by. <laughs> so so we started reminiscing about Hubble, and he told me a story that I really liked. The, uh, the, the, the prior project manager was fired by the NASA administrator quite unexpectedly in my presence for not being truthful, breaking agreements, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so... so uh, Jim arrived, and Jim came from the human space flight side, the external tank. So he didn't know any of the scientists. So they set up a little social. Uh, at the, the, the Marshall's right next to Redstone Arsenal, and they have an officer's club there they can use for things like this. Set up a little cocktail social for everybody to meet. And the Hubble scientist, uh, chiefs, the, the, the telescope scientist who's the lead scientist, walks up to Jim and the first words out of his mouth are, Odom, I'm going to make you miserable. What do you think Jim said? No, you're not because we want the same thing. No, you're not because I'm going to address our shared interests. So I only have two rules. Rule number one, avoid power struggles. Rule number two, never power struggle if you don't have the power. This is the opposite of shared interest, is, is power struggles. So I, I was looking at the Hubble servicing mission one day, and I was realizing that uh, this, is, this is not going to be easy. Uh, it had all the complexities of the Hubble telescope, plus all the complexities of the astronauts manually doing things with these bulky suits. And I realized that I understood the telescope system quite intimately, but I knew almost nothing about space operations involving humans. And it, it, it probably occurs to you that if we had a failure with the servicing mission, this would have been like the, the Hubble original failure squared. So I, I had a person I wanted, I, I, I put an ad in, in some, uh, some uh, ma magazines got an operations guy that looked pretty good. So I really wanted to hire this person. I go to see the head of administration and she says no and looks at me. That's just about what she looked like. 
uh, I had a overdrawn emotional bank account with her and uh, that didn't help. And she said, you know, you're always doing everything you can to grow your division. Uh, and now you're trying to use Hubble to get another new hire. That's not, was not your turn. And uh, this really frosted me. I was aggravated. I went back to my desk and said, yeah, she's probably right. That's what I would normally do. I'm just not doing it this time. So I said, what's the state of my emotional bank account with our mutual boss, Lynn Fisk? It was very, very good. So I did decide to do badge on the table time. You know, guys know what that is? You take your employee badge and you put it on the boss's desk. And the understanding is at the end of the conversation, somebody picks up that badge. If the boss picks up the badge, you're you quit your you quit you're fired if you if, if he gives you what you want you pick it up and put it back on and i did not want to get fired so i decided it's time for a shared interest question what does he want that i can want for him also well he wants a successful servicing mission that's obvious we both want that but that's not going to be enough juice to get through this he wants peace with her and the other directors so what's going to happen is Everybody in the place knew this was going on. Uh, we're all on one floor of a building in downtown DC. And uh, when I go walking down the hall, it's kind of like the OK Corral. They're sort of pulling people behind the doors. And uh, so can I, he's going to want, so the other directors are going to go complain about the fact that I use the Hubble servicing as a hostage to get a, this hire. Uh, so, so they're going to be complaining to him, and she's going to be mad as hell. Can I, uh, can I want that for him? Well, that took me a little while. I'm, I don't have a good relationship with her, but after a while, I decided yes, I can want that for him if he gets me what I want. And the congressional hearings were were really brutal. There, no one's hearing anything at hearings. They're brow beatings. So the way he and I decided to prepare for it was that we would sit together, and every time this. This, someone threw this piece of shit at us. We'd sort of smile and, and look at each other and say, there, there went another piece of shit. We dodged that. So, uh, and what made it worse was that they wanted to talk to him when we were there together. And I knew the details he didn't. So I'm whispering answers in his ear. Can I want for him never have to do that again? I can. So I spoke to that. Then I said, you know, I think the servicing mission is going to succeed, especially if I have this this final person. But there are things beyond my control and your control that uh, could occur, and uh, it's it's dangerous. You may you may just watch the SpaceX launch all the problems you had there. So, uh, Len, here's what I'm going to do: if if we have a failure, I'm going to call a press conference and say that you gave me everything I requested. I'm going to state my accountability and resign from the government. So now, having said all that, can I take my badge and leave? He said, yeah, pick up your badge and go. That's how it works. So, oh, I had to go through her shared interest. I forgot. Okay, so this was part of the work for this. What does she want that I can want for her also? And so I agreed in that process that I would never... Um, that's the conversation. I would never uh, end run her again. So on your feet, let's go. Did that story help? Did that make sense for you? So here's another one. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Good. Uh, when I was at Harvard... So just real quick, sorry to interrupt, but... Um, no, that's not... We got the, the, the whole time. office, the whole office is, is joining the 4D salute, so we're making progress <laughs> <Yeah>. here. Good. <laughs> Okay, so um, when I was at Harvard, uh, it was a residential program and I became 
very close with the Japanese people, with the five Japanese in the program. And when I went back to headquarters, I wanted to open up space cooperation with Japan. And uh, I wondered why we hadn't ever done anything before. So I asked people and they said, you can't work with the Japanese, they're impossible. Duh. So don't, don't bother. So I thought, I, I went to a science conference and I approached my counterpart, a guy named Yasuo, Yasuo Tanaka. And I said, Yasuo, I'd like to open up space cooperation with Japan. He says, my God, we've been trying for so many years, nobody ever wanted to do it. And I said, uh, I said, yeah, I, 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 I want to do it. And I said, uh, what I'm told is the problem is that you won't share data and NASA policy requires data to be shared, science data to be shared. He said, well, the problem is we are housed at the University of Tokyo. This is the, the, the civil, the scientific part of, of the space program. And we're professors there and we have to publish papers. And unlike you guys, we do a lot of the work on the satellite ourselves. For example, we run the operations. We go out there with our graduate students and we track, manage the antennas, the acquisition of data. And so if we turned all the data over to the public within three months or whatever that you want, we'd never write a paper because other people would write the papers and we'd lose our, our positions. So I said, that makes sense to me. I understand that. So what does he want that I can want for him also? What he wants to do is publish papers. And I want that for him as well. That's, that's the whole game in, in science. So I said, suppose we do this. Suppose I find scientists willing to relocate to ISAS and co-author papers. I said, you know, the, the best journals are English. And I, I watch you struggle to write in English. It's so different from Japanese. And this would let you and relieve your workload, have these guys work directly with you. And then you could release the data in a timely way like, uh, like we require. He said he loved the idea. I put together a, an NRA a announcement, got uh, half a dozen guys to go relocate to, the, to, uh, to Japan. And most of them had some fluency in Japanese at some level. And we did the satellite together called Solar A Yoko and completely successful. And so much so that the emperor of Japan gave Yasu a medal for this. And the mutually beneficial relation continues to this day. I say that, but uh, he he's deceased several years ago, but uh, we remain lifetime friends over this. So I just want you to see how simple it is to go from complete impasse to something that turned out to be beneficial for everybody. And from, from a NASA viewpoint, this was quite ideal because we provide the instrument, which is what our guys like to do, and the instrument technology, and they provide the spacecraft. So it was a happy marriage for everybody, advanced science for everybody. And so that that's it. Comments, questions? Make sense? Okay. So uh, Anne Cochette is uh, one of the coaches that worked for me. Sorry, Charlie. My, yeah. my observation is like, when I think about how you got to this, I'm thinking the first thing you've done is you, you actually said it to the other party like you you thought about it but then you said it so that i think that's a lot to a lot to be said about that yeah because probably others sat in a room and spoke about japanese right americans and then japanese spoke about the americans there was no conversations right. they're, they're but, both they're both running storylines other guys yeah. got and and the more they are running them, the further apart they are getting. That's exactly right. So so the first thing you do is you you look for the shared interest, and it, it wasn't hard in that we're all scientists. And secondly, you then ask how can you address the interests you share, and it, it all melts instantly. So I think this is 
you know, I, I, the Hubble example, the, the example with the JPL flight projects, the uh, factory in Volkswagen factory in Guangzhou, this, it's all the same thing. It's all just really simple. You ask the question. And, and what's fun about this is that it, it meets both parties' needs. So doing this process, asking what do they want that I can want for them also, met my needs. I got a, I got a very inexpensive science project. All I had to pay for was the instruments. They paid for the launch vehicle because they built it. They paid for the spacecraft because they built it. They paid for the operations because they operated it. This is the highest leverage thing I could ever do from the standpoint of a NASA employee running a big program. All, I, I put the money in the place that, that was most valuable for the US. <clears throat> we don't need to build launch vehicles with my money because there's a launch vehicle industry. We don't need to build satellites with my money. There's a spacecraft industry. But the idea of taking this and putting it in the universities and building a really advanced, it was an X-ray imager uh, and, and do cutting rate science in a field never done before, which is studying the sun and solar X-rays. And all I had, and all my money went into to, uh, universities and instrument builders. It, it, was, it was a boon for me. That's, that's really the key point here is that it starts out looking like you're doing this for someone else, but you, you're the ultimate benefit, finish, beneficiary of this, this work. Comments, questions, it makes sense? And just one other quick comment, Charlie. I think your last uh, thing there is, is, is the icing on the cake. You, you build the personal relationships too, which is how everything gets done is on one-to-one. -one and uh, I, I res that resonates with me because I found that to be true too. When you meet someone else's interests later down the road, when you reach out to them, they're always responsive. They're like, yeah, we've worked together well in the past. Let's do something again. So I, well, let me I, tell I, that is an excellent point you've made on, on all of these. Let me things. tell you what else happened here, just since you brought it up. As soon as I retired from NASA, uh, Yasuo had moved to Max Planck Institute in Germany. The reason is that there's a mandatory requirement. He was a university employee, university, Tokyo University, mandatory uh, retirement. I think it's 62 or 65, something like that. And he had many years of things to do still. He wasn't ready to stop doing research. And uh, a good friend of ours ran Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in Garching, Germany. Uh, and uh, Herb brought him over there and hired him as an employee so he could continue to do research. So he's living in Munich. And he, after I could retire and he could do something for me, he called me up and said, I've got a plane ticket for you to Munich. And my wife and I are going to take you around Germany on a three-week tour, all, all expenses paid, uh, because he got a big cash award from the emperor. So, you know. Wow. You, so, that, you know. And, and we remained friends for years and years. Uh, I, interesting thing, I had this thought one day, I said, who, if I needed to borrow money, some reasonable amount of money, who would I be most likely to ask? It was him and, and my Russian counterpart. <laughs> How close the relationship became. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, when I went to Japan, J Japanese do not, let outsiders in their homes. Uh, Junko doesn't like anybody coming in here much. Her sister's about it. Uh, it's okay with me. I don't have, there aren't many people coming and there's a nearby hotel. It's just as easy. But uh, I stayed in his home when I went over there and he stayed in mine and people went, what? You're staying in Dr. Tanaka's home? Yep. So it was that kind of thing. Uh, and it was also easy once you once you look at the shared interest. Without that, none of it could have ever happened. Okay, good. Okay. Get this off the screen. Okay. So I was doing a workshop with Anne Cochette. She's a, a coach from Montreal. We've been also friends for many years. And I got to this thing and I've always 
been bothered. I didn't have a good experiential exercise for this. She said, well, I've got an exercise. Can I try it? And I said, sure. I didn't know what it was. Uh, but she, in, in real time, she took over my workshop and ran this exercise. And it's been so great that, uh, it, and I, I think in this work, I can describe these events to you, but what really is going to make a difference when you actually experience it, that's when you get the real learning. So I tell people in the workshops, look around for someone you might like to know better. I'm going to ask you to do that. Think about somebody on the call or in the broader list you might know better. And in the workshop, I'd have you stand, make eye contact with these special neurons and partner with them. You can't do that, but I'm going to ask you to do it on Zoom or over the phone. And if you need a partner, raise your hand. And by the way, if we, if we run out of partners, I can, I'll do this with somebody. Decide who is going to be person A and who's going to be person B. And so when they hear the whistle, which would be every minute, stop and check the screen. And, and the, the text in the slides is my friend Frank and I doing this exercise together. So A, a tells B about their core beliefs. And I would say mine are scientific method, physics, power of empathy, being accountable, making a contribution, giving love gets love. That's my my blue story. And <clears throat> after one minute, the thing would whistle. You go to Frank, and Frank would talk about things like own your problems, be accountable, build trust, be empathetic, help others, treat people like I want to be treated. So I'd watch this timer, and after one minute, we switch again. And A tells B what they most enjoy. So I'd say thinking, ideas, teaching, seafood, oysters, fish, crabs, talking with friends, caring for loved ones, learning, communicating, drinking wine with Junko. And Frank would say his great stuff, time with family and friends, helping others to solve problems, good food, share with others, discussing new ideas, teaching. And what they care deeply about for me it would be ethics, living and spreading happiness, my loved ones, clarity of understanding, being heard, understood, respected, economic self-sufficiency, active, healthful, healthy life. A big one for me is no regrets. And Frank, the green stuff, family, grandchildren, close friends, treating others with respect and dignity, doing what I say, when I say, being trusted. Then we discussed our, our shared interests. We're both physicists. We both believe in the power of empathy and accountability. We both love learning, science methodology, live the golden rule, living in integrity, family, sharing new ideas, and teaching. Then I asked people to get up to shake hands or hug their new friend and then come up and, and talk about their experience. And the amazing thing that came out of this is the people would go up to the front of the room. The Chinese love to do this. Americans are more reluctant, but the Chinese love to take the stage, get up and talk about this. And, and they would all talk about making a, a, a what felt like a lifelong friend in eight minutes. That's the power of shared interest. I'm not going to sneaking something in trying to stay off camera. <laughs> so there it is. So back to my proposal team, you may remember this, we're competing for the JWST contract. We've done the appreciation piece, the shared interest. And they said, we got it, Charlie, we got it. The customer cares most about science results and program success. And they said, so what we did, we, they, they wrote the proposal while I was uh, out of the country, but they put in their proposal uh, on the first page, an organization chart with a picture of the lead of each of their major teams, there's about eight people. And they put in there the science that JWST was going to do that they personally cared about. And I said, wow, that is incredible. What you have done is a major storyline shift. You have taken the red storyline that they're running about you, because I know it, and you know it, that your money grubbing contractors. That's all you ever cared about. You trapped it away forever. And you said, Our, we, we, we share your interest. We're here for the science too. We're not here for the money. Uh, you, have, you have engaged 
an amazing amount of confirmation bias here. You're going to make them want to pick you. Is everybody clear on what happened here? This is this is big stuff. People do things for their reasons, not ours. So now what we would do is go to your context shifting worksheet and we would take a look at uh, interest you would share to uh, uh, forward that and get that up here. I've got a version I made on the screen. Yeah. I didn't fill in the appreciation piece it looks like. Hang on, back up. trying to get to so let's let's go back to our situation everybody remember what it, what it is let me find the uh view sorry wrong direction so Others failed to acknowledge my expertise and work collaboratively with me to address shared interests. So what shared interests with the other party could you address? Everybody clear on what we're doing here? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm for me, I'm reliving one of my failings, so... <laughs> It's both a, a good and terrifying experience all at the same time. Um, there we go. So there's our situation. And this is this is my version in filling this out. I forgot to do the appreciation piece, but I can do that. Um, what what interest do you share with the other party up here? The people that fail to acknowledge your expertise and work collaboratively with you to address your own interests. What interest could you share with them? I think in, in my case it was uh it was a work situation and we had tasks that needed to be accomplished and they I could see that they could use my expertise. Mm -hmm. to accomplish those objectives and um you know so the appreciation piece in, in my scenario would have been my, my outcome would have been better if i had appreciated them for um i guess participate i'm struggling to find the right words but i don't want to take up too much time either um you know their participation and their their um desire to um accomplish something and and let them know that that then crosses i have the same interest i'm not just there to pontificate or make their life hard you know we both want to push this across the finish line um and just to add a, a little caveat um thanks to matt's feedback i think ultimately uh, the outcome would have been the same um, I think the people that I was dealing with were not truly interested um, in, in keeping their agreements. Um, I think they were underwater and, you know, maybe they saw me as a threat. Maybe they just saw me as an annoyance, but either way, they weren't interested in keeping their agreements. So going through this process, I think I would have ended up at the same place, but I would have felt better about it. So what, what do they want that you can want for them also? They want they want to get the job done. They want yeah. to be able to to identify in this case identify specific information about what's happening with the business and which thing you know encourage the good things and discourage the bad things. So so what you could say is, I, I I'm I'm here to help you get the job done too. That's an interest we share. That's what I'm up to. That's yep. all. That's all I'm trying to do here is help you get the job done. That would be right. a major shared interest you could address. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Who else? I, I've had some luck uh, with um, 
focusing on people's career development or, or visibility within mm -hmm. their organization, mm -hmm. because particularly as a consultant, that's of no interest to me, but it's certainly very important to them. So yep. if I can help them, you know, with their own development or get them better visibility within the company by, by having a good result together, then, uh, you know, that's a shared interest. Yeah. I want you to just think for a minute how powerful it would be because what storyline are they running about you? They're probably that same kind of storyline they run about the contractors. Well, how powerful would it be if you say, just so you know, my work with you is about how I can help you advance your career and help you be more successful and speak yep. directly to that. What, yep. what you've done is you've done this same thing. You've done this storyline shift, which is shifting mindset. Good. Very good, man. How about with your clients, with your emerging business, Tanya? What can you address as a shared interest with them? So there's my emerging business, which feels like it's kind of stalling because of this consulting <laughs> business. <laughs> so I could go either path, but, um, you know, actually, um, it reminds me of something I used to tell my clients uh, when I had my a studio years ago, and I would just say kind of in a nutshell, you're successful when you no longer need me, mm -hmm. right? That you have embodied yeah. all of the goals that you set out to get to. I can help you do that. I want to see you successful. And in, in fact, you, I want you to be so successful that you actually no longer need me. That's um, a great one. That, that's that's, that, that's going to ring their, their, their bell, isn't it? It usually does. They're like, wow. And what ends up happening is they're so appreciative that I kind of think about them in that, in their success in that way, that those clients always come back. Well, because you shifted the storyline, you shifted the storyline from, I want you to come back so I can get revenue from you to, I want to make it unnecessary for you to come back. And that shifts the storyline to one where I think I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it just, it, it shows that I'm invested in their success and not just getting, you know, the revenue in. Very good. How about uh, Nico, when you, as you shop for your new wife, what's the number one shared interest you're going to be looking for? <clears throat> That's a very dangerous territory. Shall I <laughs> take another example? <laughs> Pick a different example no, if you want. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, otherwise you guys are gonna get bored with me. <laughs> um, now, the the work I, I think you know a bit of what I'm doing, and it's working with people from all cultures in South Africa. But for me, if I got to put it into words, it's to to open up the imagination. Uh, of a person or a group and when I know that I'm on the right track is when they really get so excited I mean uh, I have to phone someone back right after this because of this um, <laughs> you know to, to, to get people excited and to get people excited it's to suddenly they see something they haven't seen before a possibility That's and it's imaginative is to yeah, it's help them see imagination they've never seen before. Good, and it, it's very exciting because I don't I don't know before and what way we're going to work towards what and what it's going to be what's going to happen. It's always a surprise, but that's what that's I love. That's good. what I really love is the unpredictability, and finding your way in unleashing energy. Um, yeah, that's. And Lorenka, how about you? What's the shared interest mm -hmm. that you would? Mm -hmm use for the situation or any situation you want to address? Well, it's, um, I, I worked a couple of times with, uh, different consultants and what happened is, uh, when they try to help us, they first need to understand how we function. So, uh, sometimes when you are faced with that, so we, we, Time and time again, we have to go and explain to different consultants how do things work. And of course, you are faced with uh, animosity on the other side because, well, it's complicated. People come with all kinds of assumptions and they are like, okay, oh, how come it doesn't work that way? So over time, I kind of 
um, I figured to to as you as you say address shared interest. Tell them, look, we figured it out, and we are no smarter than you are, and so will you. You will figure it out, and then once you figure it out, you will be able to help us. And you came here to help us, so it kind of I, I notice it pulls their guards down. I mean, nobody likes mm -hmm. like when you are come as a consultant, you you like to look smart, but if you have to ask so many questions and then half of your questions, the people are like, "Well, yeah, it doesn't really work <laughs> like that." It's not easy. I can appreciate that. So that's I think that that that's the way to. I, I, I like to say we help them to help us. Good. Very good. So does anybody want to tell me uh, or email me later who you want to do the exercise with? Hey, Charlie, I'll take Larissa since she's uh, missed this thing, and then I okay, can kind of great. give you. her an update okay. on what we talked about, and, and we can do it. Okay, good. T Tanya and I paired up. You'll do it with who? Tanya. Okay, great. I thought I thought Tanya and and, and Nat uh, deserves the opportunity to get to know each other. They're gonna do they're gonna do it anyway. So <laughs> Tanya's got two to do. <laughs> All right. So Good. that leaves me Tanya, and okay with that, Nat. Tanya? Mm -hmm. I need the practice. So yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And just to be clear, we're doing the eight minute exercise. Okay. Matt? So it's me think, and Matt then. I think so Matt had to jump. So I think good, Nico good. and Matt. Okay. We good? Yes, we're good. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. And everyone else. It's such a wonderful Tuesday morning. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm one minute overdue. I'll well, we have some broken agreements later. <laughs> I, I I won't take time. I won't use time to process my broken agreement because that'd make my agreement more broken. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. You bye.